bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, there is no other name I know. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, as uh, we do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endured forever. And we certainly praise and thank the Lord that he is always mindful of us. And we should always be mindful of him. And he makes ways where it seems to be no way. He's the one that woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And we thank God because he intermingles with our thoughts to help us, to encourage us uh, along the way. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, there's certainly a lot uh, to pray for and a lot of uh, things that are going on in the world. And the Lord knows, the Lord knows both good and the bad. So we certainly want to uh, pray for those that are going through in their bodies. I uh, want to pray for the uh, second presiding bishop of the PCAF, uh, Michael Ford, as the Lord will touch his body, grant him complete deliverance and bless the family as well. And all others that are suffering and going through, uh, we pray that the Lord will intervene. The Bible says Jesus taught us, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We cry out to the Lord. He has promised to comfort us. And let us pray also for the success of uh, the service throughout the day. There's something to be said and done to encourage us, to inspire our hearts. And let us pray also on this wise that um, the plans that we make for ourselves be laid aside. And that we take up the plans of the Lord. The scripture says the Lord knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us. Those thoughts are his plans that he thinks toward us. Not evil plans, not evil thoughts, but good thoughts to bring us to our expected end. And let us realize that God has an expectation upon us, that God has a desire for us. And let us, as the scripture tells us, to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, Looking unto Jesus, who is certainly the author and the finisher of our faith. So let us pray on that rise as well. And pray uh, for men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will save and add to the church daily. That's, that's the most important thing. That people be saved. Accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Be born again. That's the most important thing. And let us pray uh, on that rise and then after that, that we'll work out our soul salvation, as the scripture says, with fear and trembling. Uh, that's honor and respect unto the Lord. So let us stand and let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your greater grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way that you've given us a mind to worship you in spirit and in truth, to be here on this hour and in this season. Hallelujah. You have appointed us one more time. 
And we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice. We ask you, Lord, that you lead us and guide us into all truth. Hallelujah. That we receive with weakness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. Remember those that are sick and afflicted and going through in their bodies. Remember each and every prayer request. Father, we thank you and we praise you, give you glory and honor in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We certainly do uh, thank God. Hallelujah. You can't thank him enough. Hallelujah. You can't thank him enough. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. And as we begin uh, in our own hearts and our minds to lift up the name of Jesus, let us, as the scripture says, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And it's good to exalt the name of the Lord. It's good to lift him up for he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. So as we begin our Bible study, we want to certainly thank and praise the Lord for our First Lady, Lady Tracy Quinn. We thank God for her and all the ministers that serve here at Christian Ministries. And we certainly do thank God for Mother Louise Davis and everyone else that has come out. Uh, and we thank those that are tuning in with us on our uh, Facebook page. We certainly do praise God for that. Amen. And we've been teaching a particular series um, dealing with uh, the school of wisdom. The school of wisdom. In our first half, we talked about uh, natural wisdom. And now we're focusing in on, for our last class, spiritual wisdom. And those that have missed out um, on these particular teachings, um, you can find them on our Facebook page, um, School of Wisdom 1, 2, and 3, and this will be our number 4. And um, as we ask uh, Sister Ladia to come up uh, at this time to get our, our quiz handout uh, for this particular week, and to, it goes over what we had talked on um, last week, uh, as is our custom. We'll review it briefly, um, and then we'll go into depth with it at the end of our Bible study. And I know that some of you uh, may not know the answers, uh, because this is the first class that you're in, but uh, don't fear, never mind, amen, because at the end of the class, we'll give you the answers. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm sure that if you need a pen, um, just raise your hand. All right, so we need two, three, four pens if we have them. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly do thank God for our Bible study, a school of higher learning. Um, as, as we're going to expedite our time. Thank you, Jesus. Um, like I said, we'll be actually going over them and filling them out uh, as in full um, at the end of our Bible study. So just those of you that have been with me uh, for these third uh, class, then you already know the answers. <laughs> uh, in the book of Ephesians, Paul gives thanks and prayers uh, for the saints that God will give them the spirit of blank and blank in the knowledge of him. That's number one. Uh, number two, true or false, <clears throat> the doctrines and teachings of Jesus Christ will give us knowledge of him and help us to understand his call. That's true or false. All right. Uh, number three, it says, what is the eyes of your understanding? What is the eyes of of your understanding according to the book of Ephesians. Um, number four, it says, God wants you to know the blank of his calling. God wants you to know the blank of his calling. Number five, all right, 
True or false? The gospel of Jesus Christ contains the hope of his calling. The gospel of Jesus Christ contains the hope of his calling. That's true or false. Number six, uh, what are the three steps to learning the scriptures according to Proverbs chapter number one? Uh, what are the three steps to learning? And like I said, uh, for those that haven't been here, uh, we'll fill in those blanks at the end of our Bible study. All right, uh, I was gonna say verse number seven. <laughs> Question number seven, it says, what is the difference between natural and spiritual wisdom? What is the difference between natural and spiritual wisdom? And number eight, who do we ask for wisdom? Who do we ask for wisdom? And number nine, it says, when you receive knowledge and understanding, what should you receive next? When you receive knowledge and understanding, what should you receive next? All right. And number 10, it says, what are the biggest barriers to you studying the Word of God? What are the biggest barriers to you studying the Word of God? So that's a personal question there. Um, and we're asking that question for a reason. Amen. All right. All right. So we'll, like I said, we'll go over um, this particular lesson, uh, that particular quiz, at the end of our Bible study. And I want you to turn with me, go back with me, um, over to the book of Ephesians. And, and you know, take notes that you can uh, be able to reflect back on. Uh, that's the purpose of Bible study. Uh, sometimes I think we get lost in the, the essence or the meaning of Bible study. Uh, Bible study should be an appetizer uh, for you, uh, wherein you become inquisitive, and then uh, when you get to yourself and you start to do devotional, when you go over the Bible study, it's meant for you to dig deeper so that you can gain more wisdom and knowledge in the Word of God. Paul put it this way, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you should study God's word so that God can be pleased with you. Amen? So the purpose of Bible study is to, you know, you take notes and uh, you, you later on, you get to where you are studying the Bible on a one-to-one -one and it helps to give you some guidance you further dig deeper into the Word of God. So, uh, quite naturally, we can't uh, cover this whole lesson and get into the fullness of the lesson in just 45 minutes. So, it takes you to uh, take more time out during your week. Uh, Bible study actually should be spent daily. You should daily get into the Word of God. Set time out daily to study God's Word. And when we do that, that's when we grow. That's when we mature. It's like, it's like anybody that's exercising. When you're exercising on a continual basis, you get stronger. When you read and study the Word of God, you get, on a regular basis, you get stronger. It builds you up. Uh, it helps you with your daily life. So as we uh, begin, I want you to turn with me um, to the book of Ephesians. To the book of Ephesians chapter number 3. The book of Ephesians chapter number 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. And once you get there, I want to go to 
verse number 3. Ephesians chapter number 1, and we want to start out with verse number 3. And it's interesting, this book of Ephesians is, is literally a masterpiece. And it literally gives you what you need. It gives you what you need to help you to understand your spiritual salvation. Uh, and it gives you spiritual wisdom. The book of Proverbs, it's, it has, in essence, uh, natural wisdom, if you allow me to say it that way. But, but the book of Ephesians, it gives you a, a, a spiritual uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding in Christ Jesus. So that you'll be able to, um, what the scripture is getting ready to tell us, understand the hope of your calling. Why are you here? What has God called me for? Why, why does he want me to be anointed? Why does he want me to live separate from sinners and live a saved and sanctified life? The, because he wants you to do that for his glory. For his glory. So as we get ready to uh, go into our Bible study today, I want you to go to, uh, like I said, Ephesians chapter number one and verse number three. Paul, Paul is, is the, what this is called here, uh, the beginning of this chapter. The beginning of this chapter is really what, what, what historians call a doxology. And a doxology is just simply uh, giving God praise for what he has done. You've done that yourself. <laughs> You've given God praise for what he has done. That's called a doxology. And Paul is, is giving a doxology, uh, giving God praise for what he has already done. Amen? So verse number three, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And that, that word blessed uh, is the same word that Jesus used in the Beatitudes when he said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for, they, for uh, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In this same context of blessed, it, it, means, it means that, that uh, one should be happy because God will provide for you. You, you, you are you blessed when you're on the Lord's side, realizing that God is your shield, that God is your provider, that God is your help. A lot of people don't realize that their help coming from the Lord. God is your healer. God is your deliverer. God is your strong tower. And when you realize that, uh, you are blessed, which means happy, because when you go into tests and go into trials, you don't panic. You don't, you don't get afraid. Why? Because you know you are secure in God. Amen? He's your hiding place. Your shelter in the time of the storm. So Paul is saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, who has blessed us. And there's, a, there's an ED on the end of that word. God has already done it. God is not doing the blessing right now. God has already blessed you. As the scripture tells us, if we were to read further, before the foundation of the world, God has already blessed you. God has already provided everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness. In other words, God is not providing you what you need as you go along in life. God blessed you before you were even born with everything that you need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So God is not just making this up. In other words, when, when trouble hits you, God is not somewhere to say, well, I wonder how I'm going to deliver her out of this. I wonder how I'm going to deliver him out of that. God is not all, God is not thinking that way. God has already 
made a way of escape. God has already provided you with everything that you need. Amen? So he's giving God praise who has blessed us. Now notice what it says. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places where? In Christ. So notice that word, all. God has given you everything that you need. All your spiritual blessings. Everything. All spiritual blessings. And he did it, blessed you, and it says, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. And that's looking, that heavenly place is looking to where Christ is seated now. And we are seated together with him uh, in heavenly places. We'll, we'll get to that part of the scripture in a moment. But, but I want you to see here and take note that all of your blessings are in Christ Jesus. Paul put it this way in another one of uh, his epistles in the book of Galatians. He said, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Uh, uh, in Christ Jesus, the Bible says that you are a new creature. Uh, created in Christ Jesus. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So everything you need is in Jesus. All your spirituality, all of your deliverance is in Jesus. All the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you will ever need uh, is in Jesus. All of your healing is in Jesus. All of your blessings uh, are where? In Jesus. So as long as I stay connected to Jesus, I stay connected to all of my blessings. As long as you stay connected to Jesus, you stay connected to all of your blessings. And if you stay connected to all of your blessings, the devil can't do nothing with you. I mean, because you're blessed. And if God says you're blessed, you're blessed. I like that Fred Hammond song that says, I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed uh, in the fields, I'm blessed when I come and when I go. Uh, same likewise with you. As long as you are in Christ Jesus, you are blessed. Amen? Blessed everywhere you go because God has provided you everything you need. Amen? So he's giving you all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And that just simply means that heavenly place means that that's where Jesus is seated right now. He's seated in a heavenly place. And because we are in Christ Jesus, uh, spiritually speaking, though we are uh, naturally here on this earth, spiritually speaking, we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. So then now drop down then with me uh, to verse number eight. Hallelujah. My God. Drop with me to verse number eight. Um, verse number 8 says, Wherein he hath what? Abounded toward us in all what? Wisdom and prudence. Amen? So, so that word abound, abounded means uh, to, to increase, to increase, to increase. God expects you to increase. And God himself, he increases himself with you. You start out with a little, but as you continue on, you, you, you build, you increase. In other words, you may start out weak, but if you continue with the Lord, you'll get strong. You'll get mighty. You may start out unknowing, unknowledgeable. But if you continue with the Lord, you get smarter. You get wiser. You get stronger. And you may not be able to discern a, a, a can of paint. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But if you continue with the Lord, you'll, you'll, you'll know all the colors of the rainbow, so to speak. You'll increase. God expects us to increase. The scripture says grace and peace uh, uh, be unto them and it talks about to those that grow in the knowledge of God 
and our Savior Jesus Christ increase. So the scripture in here is saying that uh, verse number 8 says, Wherein he hath abounded toward us, increased toward us, in what? All wisdom. That wisdom uh, means right there, it means skill. And what skill? The ability to live holy. The ability to fulfill the will of God. The ability to, to walk out your purpose and your calling. Amen? Now, that's very important because that word wisdom, it, it, it makes you wise in, in order how to live a godly life, how, how to resist temptation, how to overcome the enemy. Amen? That's why in Paul's chapter number six, he says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he tells you, put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all, stand therefore, he said. Putting on, having your loins girt about with truth. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He tells you to, to above all, take on the shield of faith. So that you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Huh? And the sword of the spirit. And the helmet of salvation. Amen? So, 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 as you walk with God, you gain wisdom on how to live this life successfully. Huh? So, so you, you'll know the wisdom in counting it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. So that you'll know the wisdom that, that if you get afflicted, you can praise God and say, this life affliction which is just but for a moment. It's working for my good. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You realize what Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter number 8, uh, when it says, uh, 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 my God, I'm not losing my scripture. <laughs> in Romans, chapter number 8, when he said, all things work together for good to them that what? Love God. To them that are the called according to his purpose. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That comes through, uh, that wisdom comes through you studying the scriptures, studying the word of God. Uh, here a little, there a little, line on line, precept on precept. Amen? Every, every little bit of scripture uh, increases uh, uh, to more knowledge, to more understanding. What do you mean by that, Pastor? When, when you understand faith, then you can understand mercy. When you understand mercy, you can understand grace. And it all starts out with faith, understanding faith. Uh, when you understand those things, you can understand forgiveness. You can understand the power of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Amen. So it, it increases. God it abounds towards you. Amen? In other words, uh, simply put, let me just make it very plain. Uh, God, God, through Jesus Christ, snatched the covers off and revealed himself to us in all wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Wherein now, we, it, it was a barrier between us and God. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus, the Bible says he broke down that middle wall of partition and now we can come boldly. Uh, to the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find a uh, grace to help us in our time of need. Hallelujah. Uh, he made a way. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, not, not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Us. Amen. Who were at one time without hope. Uh, but God, through Christ Jesus, he has abounded toward us and now we have an enduring hope. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let me, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. It says, verse number 8, having abounded toward us in all what? In all wisdom and what? Prudence. Now, that word prudence means this. I want you to write this down. That word prudence means
means this. It means, it means understanding with great care. Understanding with great care. And now let me explain what God did. God gave us wisdom or the skill to be able to live a holy and a godly life. It comes through His Word, the knowledge and understanding of His Word. And when He says that He did it with prudence, meaning that God did it with careful understanding, he did it with careful understanding and care. In other words, he took in consideration every detail, everything that, that could hold you bound, everything that could block the blessing. He, he, he took into account everything concerning you that pertains to life and godliness. In other words, he left no rock unturned. No stone unturned. He, he, he made ways where it seemed to be no way for you. Hallelujah. He took great care in that. Hallelujah. I want you to get that in your mind. That, 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 that. It's not happenstance that Jesus came from a virgin. Hallelujah. And was born in a manger uh, in the town of Bethlehem. And, and, and it wasn't happenstance that he was betrayed and died on the cross for your sins. It wasn't happenstance that, that, that every, every, every trial and every tribulation that you were in uh, while you were unsaved, that, that, that it happened for a reason. So that, so that you can end that life and start a new beginning in Christ Jesus. All of that, all of that that you've been through even before the cross, hallelujah, was, was pre-calculated uh, by God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, so nothing about your salvation, nothing about your deliverance was left up to chance. And now that you're over here in Zion, if you allow me to say it, over here in holiness and over here in righteousness, he even increases his grace and his mercy even the more. Hallelujah. He, he gives you even a, month, a more abundant favor. More abundant power. Hallelujah. Uh, since you have uh, 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 come over unto him to receive him in glory and honor. Y'all follow me? Hallelujah. So, so that word prudence there, uh, it means that God took great care. Sometimes we may think that God doesn't see us, doesn't care about us, but that's, 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 that's not true. <laughs> if you know about God, you know that's not true. Amen? Hallelujah. God predestinated you. In other words, he preordained you uh, before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. He knew you. Uh, the scripture says he foreknew us. Hallelujah. My God, I'm getting myself happy. I gotta calm down. But he, he foreknew me. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And and though we have committed trespasses and sins, he looked beyond all of our faults. Uh, and he saw our need. Why? Because he sees the finished product. Hallelujah. He knows that all things work together for good. He knows that his grace and his mercy is sufficient. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And he brought all of that in Christ Jesus for you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us move then. Let us move on. My God. Come on. Let's just give God a praise. I feel some, I feel some revelation up here this morning. Hallelujah. Now notice, verse number eight. It says, verse number eight, we're in God hath abounded, increased toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Verse number 9 says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. So God, uh, at one time, this gospel was here. The devil, even now, 
give to us, those that are here seated in heavenly places. The God of this world, meaning the devil, he blinded our eyes. Amen. At least we should believe and, and, uh, uh, and see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But God, in his infinite wisdom and his timing, when it was your time to be saved, when it was your time to be delivered, God made sure that you would hear the gospel of your salvation. And that gospel of your salvation is God calling you to be saved. When you heard that Jesus saves and, and that you, he gave you faith to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was not of your goodness. Huh? That was the goodness of the Lord. When, when, when all hell broke loose in your life before you surrendered and repented, that was not of your goodness. That was the goodness of the Lord. For the Bible says it's the goodness of the Lord that leadeth us to repentance. God was working with the Holy Ghost to lead you to repentance to reveal himself in you. Amen. The hope of his call. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now, let me, let's, let's move on. Drop in now to, to verse 17. Verse 17. Y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Verse 17 actually begins in verse 15. Paul now, he's, he's laid the foundation for why we should bless God, that doxology. Doxology means, once again, thanking and praising God for what he has already done. Those beginning chapters there, uh, the beginning of the verses there, Paul is praising God for what he's already done concerning salvation, concerning uh, the, the plan of salvation. That God took great care, amen, for our salvation. That's why you can have complete confidence in the Lord. Uh, I don't have to worry. I used to worry. Am I saved? Am I saved? Am I going to heaven? Uh, is there a heaven? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, when you study the word of God, it gives you faith to believe uh, and to trust God. Uh, and then, not only that, uh, the God... God begins to manifest himself in your life and you can see the move of God in your life. Amen? In other words, you, you can live this thing and God show up so many times that you know that there is a God. You know that God is a provider. Huh? When, when the enemy would have destroyed you, thank you Lord, God stepped on in right on time. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when we want him, but he's what? Always. Always. Us all that come on shot. Always. On time. Hallelujah. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Why? Because he's always right on time. Amen. That's what Paul was praising God for. Amen. We ought to praise God for that. Yeah, hallelujah. We ought to give him thanks for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When, I, when people counted me out, huh, God counted me in. When people counted you out, God counted you in. Huh? God never gave his up on you. He never turned his back on you. Huh? Even when we turned our back on ourselves. Huh? Hallelujah. God was there. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. Thank you. So, so in verse 15, verse 15 is Paul's prayer. He's praying a special prayer. Uh, in this chapter and in the chapter number three, I believe it is, Paul prays another special prayer. Amen. Concerning uh, our knowledge in Christ Jesus. He's praying that we would understand the breadth, the depth, the height, 
Amen. He got consumed, hallelujah, with, with knowing Jesus because he realized that if he knew Jesus and had Jesus on his side, he had everything. When we realize that life is not worth living without Jesus, we have everything. Amen. Paul himself, he didn't even look at the, the, the suffering of Jesus as, as him being on that cross. He wasn't pitiful and sorry that Jesus went to the cross, that he died. That Paul said he glories in the cross. He realized the benefit uh, of, of the cross of Jesus Christ, his suffering, amen, his resurrection, his power. Amen. We have to realize the benefit uh, of being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, believing and trusting in God. We got to realize that, that, that there's a benefit in that. Hallelujah. And then he said, in one passage of scripture, he was so consumed, he said, I won't let nothing I'll separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have to become so excited about Jesus that we're, uh, we're willing to lay it all down so that we can know him. Huh? Uh, in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable unto his death. I am going to shout, but by any means necessary, he said, I may attain until the resurrection of the dead. Huh? By any means necessary. That's why he said in the book of, 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 of Timothy, 2 Timothy, before he was about to die, he said, I, I fought a good fight. Huh? I kept the faith. His there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Huh? He wasn't fearing death. Huh? He looked at death as a promotion. Huh? Those that are walking with Christ Jesus look at death as a promotion. Oh, heck of a shot. Uh, not that he wanted to die, but realizing that death is appointed and for this cause came he into the world. Hallelujah. That we might attain that eternal life. Hallelujah. Y'all with me today? Thank you, Jesus. So Paul then begins to pray. Huh? He begins to pray. And verse, verse 16, I know we said 17. But, but I just want to see you, show you that he's praying. He says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, notice what he said, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of what? Him. Amen. Paul, Paul, he was literally praying. He was praying that God would help you understand the great resources God has given us. Amen. Let me say that again. This is important. Because you can pray for this. <laughs> Amen. He was praying that God, that God would help us to understand the great resources that are literally in Christ Jesus. That, that God has put in Christ for us. He said, my people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Amen. Knowledge is power. Amen. Today's readers are tomorrow's leaders. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And he said, my people perish. That word perish, uh, it, it goes further than die. It means that, that, that to perish means to live a life without purpose. You don't want to live your life without your purpose. God has purpose in you. Huh? Before the foundation of the world, your purpose. Amen. I remember, I'm going to take a little sidebar here. I remember I was at Mercyhurst College. I think it was my first year there. And I came out of the class, 
and this guy was teaching, he was teaching good, and I came out of it, and I said, man, I understand why I'm here now. I understand my purpose. <laughs> Wrong. 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 I thought that the God had given me some wisdom, some knowledge and understanding. But it was, it was, it was, it was earthly. Huh? It was earthly. It was natural. That's not why God called me. Huh? That wasn't my purpose. I didn't find my true purpose until I got into Christ Jesus. That's when all the dots connected. That's when life started to make sense. When an individual gets into Christ, their life begins to make sense. The dots uh, start to connect. You understand why you go through what you go through. Huh? <laughs> you understand why you, you, you felt strange and out of place at times. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. You understand why huh? God deals with you in dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all remember? Yeah. It was like Joseph. Joseph began to tell his brothers his dreams and his father his dreams and stuff like that and the visions that he saw. They didn't understand them. They got so upset when they threw him in a, in a pit. Uh, and then, then, then when he was, uh, uh, while he was there in Egypt, God revealed his purpose. Huh? And he said he was able to forgive his brothers because he said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Hallelujah. Y'all think? Amen. So you begin to understand why people treat you the way they treat you. Huh? That's just to draw you closer to God. Huh? Hallelujah. And, that, and that's revealed to you in Christ Jesus. That's that wisdom. Huh? And prudence. And understanding. All right. Let me, let me finish up here. Thank you, Lord. Verse 17. Let's read it again. What does it say? He's praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's praying that God will give you the spirit of what? Wisdom. And, and that spirit of wisdom is is the spirit uh, of wisdom that is connected to Christ Jesus. Amen? Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That word revelation means insight and discernment which is given to you by the Holy Ghost. Paul is literally praying that God would give you insight and discernment by the Holy Ghost. What Paul is asking God to do for you is, best way I can understand, uh, explain this is, when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, it teaches you and it leads you and guides you into all truth. What truth? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Holy Ghost helps you to, uh, it reveals to you the teachings and the doctrines of Jesus. Alright? Now notice what he said. That wisdom deals with skill and ability. Skill and ability to do what? To apply the scriptures to your life. Notice, he also said, wisdom and what? What else? Revelation. revelation. And revelation simply means discernment. Discernment. Amen? Discernment. Now, what he's saying is, is this. When, when you read and study God's word and you gain some knowledge and insight into the word of God that 
you'll be able to discern from good and evil. You may say, that's simple. I know what good is. I know what evil is. And I know how to avoid it. That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Being able to know how to avoid the evil. Right? But then why do people stumble and fall so much? Why do people sin so much if they're able to discern it? There's, there's a problem. Amen? So what Paul is praying is that people be able to get, grasp the, the, the full knowledge, the full understanding of the teachings of Jesus Christ so that they can be able to apply it to their lives. Amen? Now, this is what he means by discernment or revelation. He means that you read a scripture. Uh, let me see. I, I had one in my mind earlier. It's escaping me now. But, but let's deal with smoking, for instance. Smoking. You will never see it or it won't. It's not in the scripture. That, that that smoking is wrong. Amen? It doesn't, it doesn't say, thou shalt not smoke. But, but the scriptures discern it. The one we always go to is that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? You shall not destroy the temple. Amen? And, and people without discernment will buck up against that. You follow? People without discernment will, will say, uh-uh, they don't say that. Gambling. The Bible doesn't tell you right out that gambling is a sin. But when you realize the context of the scriptures, realize the word of God, that, that, that when you pull from God's word and realize that God does not want you to live by chance, God wants you to be a good steward over your finances. Huh? And, and, and when you understand these things and it's revealed to you, you'll stop gambling. Hmm? When, you, when people are uh, even dealing with pornography and, and not, not they got what they call uh, 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 soft porn. Huh? And soft porn is just uh, 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 people shabbily clothed uh, and, 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 and you know but they're really naked if you allow me to say just leave a little bit for your imagination you follow me? Uh, you understand that well when I look at these things uh, through, through, through revelation discernment that these things uh, uh, make me filthy these things make me and cause me to repent. Mm -hmm. That when I go before God and try to pray, all I see is, uh, woo -woo. that's all I see. And then when I done, all I see is, oh God. You pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart. <laughs> Renew a right spirit within me. Now, that prayer for you to be renewed, be restored, is the Holy Ghost. It's revealing to you that that behavior is not in consistency with God. Follow? Discern. Discern. That's what Paul is praying. Be able to, to, to be able to discern the will of God. Amen. I can, I can, you can become so in touch with the spirit of discernment. You can read one scripture and not fully have the understanding of it. But through the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will connect the dots for you by bringing in other scriptures that support it. That's walking in discernment. Y'all with me? That's, that's why we need to pray. For wisdom and, and revelation, discernment. God will give it to you so that you can know, huh? not guess. And let me say this before we all get too excited. <laughs> that, that 
If you don't give God nothing to work with, you won't have nothing. What do you mean, Brother Pastor? If you're not studying the Word of God and praying and seeking God, you're not giving Him anything to work with. Amen? The one thing I've learned, I've discerned about God, He won't force Himself on you. Amen? God will never force Himself on you. Never. You gotta want Him. That's why He said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. You gotta have a desire. Hallelujah. I heard one preacher say, An insatiable appetite. I had to look that up. That means, that means a, 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 a continuous appetite that's never satisfied. Amen? Uh, the more you receive, the more you want. Amen? The more you desire, the more you get. That's the way God works. Amen? If you want to know Him, He's going to show you Him. Huh? If you want to feel his power, he'll give you his power. If you want to receive his Holy Ghost, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God will bless you if that's your desire. It's going to cost you something. Amen? It's going to cost you something. Let's, let's make it plain. It's going to cost you something. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You got to be willing to lay it down. Give him what he wants. Because when you discern that it's going to cost me something, you realize that what he has to offer is far greater. In other words, whatever I give up, uh, God got something better. So, so me giving that up is far better uh, than me keeping it. What God has for me what God has for you is far better huh, than what you can uh, desire for yourself. The scripture says, I have not seen, no ear have heard what God has for them that love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, I'm getting excited again. All right, let's move on. Y'all ready to move on? All right, notice. He said, he's praying. That God may give you the spirit of wisdom. Pray, saints, that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Huh? Notice where it says, in the knowledge of him. Who's him? Jesus Christ. Amen? You've got to study about Jesus. You've got to know everything there is to know about Jesus. A good place to start is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That's the foundation of the church. Amen? The apostles build their epistles off of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And then Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it connects you to the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We teach it right now. Uh, if you want to know Jesus in the Old and in the New, study Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you want to know the history of the church, study uh, Acts chapter number 7. If you want to know the history of the church beginning in the wilderness, study Acts chapter 7. Not everybody writing that down. Thank you, Jesus. We need to get this. Because, because we're actually going somewhere, church. Uh, we're going somewhere. The vision that God has given, hallelujah, uh, that, that you'll be teachers, that you'll be witnesses, hallelujah, uh, that you'll be uh, 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 making disciples. So in order to do that, you've got to be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Do y'all believe that? Hallelujah. Yeah, pray. Lord, renew me. You know, uh, speaking of discernment, when, 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 uh, what's his name? David. He, y'all know what he did? He got Bathsheba, you know. And you know, I don't believe 
Now, she was all innocent. That's just my thought. You know, that's just my thought. I don't know. You know, that's just my thought. You know, uh, just because of her position. You know, but she was. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible don't bring that out, so I can't bring that out. So don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but, but David, you know, he, 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 he saw her, desired her, because he wasn't operating in his gifts, in his call. When you don't operate in your gifts and your callings, you go astray. Am I right? So when, when David was so out of touch that he didn't even realize that he had done anything wrong. You follow? So when God had to send a prophet to him to reveal to him that he was wrong. Now here's David's discernment. He, 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 he prayed to God. Said, God forgive me. Against thee, Lord, have I sinned and done this wicked in your sight. He said, Lord, wash me and I shall be clean. Purge me and I shall be whiter than snow. Wash me with his son. But, but notice, the reason why I'm bringing up that prayer and that discernment. He said, Lord, when you cleanse me up, then will I teach transgressors your way. Amen? We should be wanting to be cleaned up so that we can help other people. So that we can teach other people huh? God's way. Because God's way is the best way. Am I right? But in order to do that correctly, you've got to be clean. Huh? You've got to know His word. Am I right? You gotta be submitted to his word in order to be used by God in a mighty way. Amen? Uh, I don't wanna live beneath my privileges. I want everything on the plate. Amen? Uh, when I sit down to eat, I want, I want everything on the plate. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I want a belly wash up behind me. Come on here, somebody. Huh? When we when we sit at the table, huh, huh, with God, huh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we should want to we should want to eat everything on the plate. He said, "I behold, I prepare for you a table before you in the presence of your enemies." Huh? He said, "I anoint your head with oil, huh, and your cup shall be over. You should you should want to as evangelists everything say, "Come and die." Uh, at the master's team. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You should have the attitude I want it all. Yeah. Huh? Do you want it all? Yeah. Huh? I want it all. Hallelujah. I'm tired of living beneath my privileges. I want it all. Yeah. Amen? I'm tired of trying a falling short. Huh? I want it all. Oh, the air color shot. I believe. Don't you believe? Yeah. Don't you trust in him? Yeah. Huh? My God. And, and that's what uh, uh, us, uh, studying the scriptures will do to our mind. It will change our mind. It will change our walk. Yeah. It will increase our faith. Yeah. Huh? Hallelujah. You realize that what the enemy is trying to offer you doesn't compare. Huh? With what, what Jesus is offering. Hallelujah. You realize that, that, that what the enemy is trying to do to you huh, is nothing. Huh? Hallelujah. Compared to what God has already given you. Y'all with me today? Hallelujah. When, when he told Joshua, gave Joshua his assignment. Huh? In Joshua chapter number one. When he gave Joshua his assignment, told him to lead the children over to the land of e uh, 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 Canaan, thank you, Lord, he told him explicitly, huh? be strong. Didn't he tell him that? Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. He said a few times, be strong and very courageous. Am I right? Then God said, huh? notice what he said. Be not dismayed. Meaning that when you get over there, you'll, you'll see some 
stuff that don't make sense that can rock your faith, he said, don't be dismayed. Because, look, God already knows what's over there. Huh? God already knows that I have already given you the victory. So it's not about what you see, it's about what you believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you walk with God, you're going to face some giants. Huh? If you walk with God, you're going to face some adversity. Huh? But realize, God said, be strong. Realize, God said, don't be dismayed. In other words, don't be fearful or depressed by what you see. That's faith. That's trust in God. God always wants you to be successful. Amen? That comes through study and knowledge of the scriptures. That comes through revelation and discernment of the word of God. Amen? Especially, uh, y'all hear me today? Especially when situations come upon your life and you feel uh, that it's uh, unfair. And some people feel that it's unfair and they curse God and they stop walking with God. But when you know the word of the Lord, when you know that, that it's working for your good, when you understand the principle of patience, what Jesus said, in your patience you possess your soul. And then you understand that they that wait upon the Lord they shall what? Renew. Uh, if you wait on God, he's going to renew you. He's going to renew your strength. Huh? Wait, I say. Wait, I say on the Lord. Then you're not quick to throw in the towel. You're not quick to give up. Amen? It takes, let me, I'm, I'm getting off track here for a minute, but, but I believe it's necessary. It takes time. Not for God to develop his plan in your life. <laughs> in other words, it takes time for God to receive glory out of your life. You've got to be willing to go through in order for God to get glory out of your life. Amen? Amen. If I was baking a cake, I put the ingredients together and I, and I put it in the oven. It takes time for that cake to cook, though. No. If I get it out too soon, we'll all know it, won't we? Huh? <laughs> but if I get it out just right, you'll know that too, won't you? Uh, same way with God. God has a time. There's a time for everything under this heaven and everything under the sun. Amen? You gotta wait on God's time. God sees it. Amen? Hallelujah. God doesn't operate on, on chronos. That's our time. God operates on crop, uh, 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 kairos. That's his time. Kairos. Amen. Uh, that's God's time. God's so tough. Thank you, Lord, that he sets time, but he's not bound by time himself. <laughs> all right, that's all another Bible study. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all with me? All right. Um, let's drop down here to verse 18. Paul said, this is still his prayer. He's praying that you receive wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That, for what purpose? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And the eyes of your understanding is your mind. Amen. That's the eyes of your understanding, your mind. He wants your mind to be enlightened about the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. He wants you to know about Jesus. Now notice what it says. That you may know with the hope of what? His call. Amen. That you will know what's in the calling of Jesus. Why did he call you? Not only why did he call you, but what's in that call? Amen? What's in that call? Why is the devil on my track all the time trying to turn me back? <laughs> huh? Why do I struggle and fight? Huh? 
with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Follow me? Why? Uh, there's a reason for that. Amen? Now notice what he said. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what the hope of his calling and what the, uh, what does it say? The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, that word, his inheritance, is not talking about your inheritance. It's talking about God's inheritance in you. You remember the parable that Jesus made? He said, when, when, uh, one of the 99 sheep go astray, he goes after the one, and when he finds it, he rejoices. Yeah. Huh? That's the same way God feels about you when you utilize everything that he's extended to you. God rejoices when you use his power. God rejoices when you operate in his anointing. That's why we get the scripture that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Huh? When you operate and do what God uh, has ordained for you to do, God gets, he rejoices out of that. Because you are God's inheritance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God's inheritance. Amen? You're special to God. God loves you. Exceedingly and abundantly. Not through Christ Jesus. Amen? You belong to God. You are His inheritance. Amen? That's what the scripture means when it says, Let your light shine before men. Huh? That people may see the good works that you do, that they may do what? Your Father which is in heaven. Why? Because you are God's inheritance. Amen? Thank you. Y'all with me? So you special. <laughs> you know you special. Are you glad about it? All right. Now notice me. All right, let's move on. He says, what verse be? Okay. All right, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that he may know what the hope of his calling and with the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. See how that's written? His inheritance in the saints. Amen? You are God's inheritance. Amen? Now notice. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Notice that verse 19. He says, and what he wants you to know. That's what the spirit of wisdom and revelation is for. So you can be able to discern what is the, notice how he puts it, exceeding greatness. God is not just great. God is exceedingly great. God is not just great in your life. God is exceedingly great in your life. That's why Paul says, you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Not just a conqueror. You are more than. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? You are somebody in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We focus too much on the negative. God doesn't focus on the negative. He focuses on the positive. We ought to focus on the positive and not the negative. If the police were to walk in here, y'all be like, oh, God, God, what I do? <laughs> oh, boy. Some of you be high. Thank you. you follow? How come the police kids couldn't come in and, and, and give you, you know, tell you your lights is on or something? You know what I mean? Something positive. You follow? That's the way we think. We got to reprogram ourselves. We got to stop seeing ourselves through the eyes of people. See ourselves through the eyes of God. <laughs> Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Notice what he said. What is the seeming greatness of his power? So what? Us were, you and I. And that's a very strong word after that. Who believe? That means 
who has faith. Amen? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. They that come to God must first believe that He what? He is. Huh? And that He's a rewarder to them that what? Diligently seek Him. This power is toward those that have faith. It's by faith you access everything you need in Christ Jesus. Amen? Y'all with me? Alright, I can move on. Notice what he said. According to the working of his mighty power. He did this according to his mighty power. God, if, if God be for us, who then can be what? Amen. God, the God has done, that's why Jesus, when he went to the cross and died, he said, it is finished. Huh? It's complete. It's done. Amen. Hallelujah. Your salvation is complete. It's done. It's finished. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? Alright. Now know. And it's done with, with power. Now, I want you to write this down. We're going to talk about power. A power is divided into uh, uh, the, the physical act and authority. When you think about power in the scripture, it talks about a physical act and it talks about authority. Now, God himself is the authority. Nothing outranks him or overrules him. Amen? Based on his authority, there is some physical things you can do that you can manifest in your life. When the devil tempts you because you have authority, because you are in Christ Jesus and, and that authority has been passed on to you, you have power to walk away. The physical act. Amen? Because you have power with Christ Jesus, you have, you have, you have the ability to do, do good and resist the evil. So you got to understand what power means. Amen? Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. The police officer, I said him earlier, because he's been deputized with authority, wears that badge, huh? and he gets his power from his gun. <laughs> You follow me? Thank you. You get your power and authority from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> uh, you shall receive what? After the Holy Ghost says what? Come against you. So, so when you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Ghost. Now you have been positioned with authority. Because you are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Huh? And he also gives you power, amen, to the ability to overcome and the ability to be successful. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now, thank you, Lord. Now, let's move on. Verse number 20. He says, uh, uh, Jesus, which he had brought in Christ Jesus, he brought this power in Christ Jesus when he raised him from what? the dead, and sat him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Notice what it says. Far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. Now, I just want to focus on, this is my last point here, verse 19. That, uh, no, I'm talking about uh, verse 20. He did this when he raised Jesus from the dead. Huh? When, when Christ got up from the dead, he got up out of that grave with all power. You may say, well, didn't he have all power before he went to the grave? He didn't have all power over death uh, until he got up. <laughs> Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now, that's when he had all power. Amen? And, and, and that same power huh, that's in Jesus to overcome
overcome, that same power is in you to overcome. That same power that got Jesus up on that grave is the same power and authority that is in you. That's why when you are in Christ, you get seated far above principalities and powers. Huh? And, and you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Because you have authority and power to walk with him. That means something. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. That's why we got to study about him. That's why we got to know what we got. Y'all follow me? You mess around having a garage sale. You got a little painting on the wall. You don't know what you got. Somebody come by and say, well, how much you want for that? He said, ah, oh, just give me a dollar. Huh? They reach in their pocket real quick. Here you go. They take it, look at it, and see it's, it's a Rembrandt. Huh? Because you didn't know that you had something that was priceless. You sold it for a dollar because you didn't know. You didn't take the time to know what you had. Same likewise with what Christ has done for us. Amen? You got to take time to study this word so you'll know what he has done for us, what he has done for you. That you know the power and authority that is in Christ Jesus for you. You'll know what the hope of his calling is. Amen? Y'all with me? All right, let me finish up. Um, uh, Sister Monique, let me finish up. Thank you, Lord. And as we move on with our Bible study, we certainly do thank God for those that uh, have tuned in with us and have been with us. And tune in next week, and we'll have a continued study on a new uh, series. In Jesus' name, amen.